It's time to open another window on our CBB's advent calendar. I love our advent calendar. Yesterday we had Sid telling us what he loves about Christmas. Today it's time to open window number 16. And if you'd like to find out what's behind it, just go to the CBB's website, bbc.co.uk slash CBB's. There'll be a different window to open every day until Christmas with a fantastic treat behind it. Talking of fantastic treats, you know what it's time for? The tweenies? The tweenies. I'm on my way to the greengrocer shop to buy some fruit for the tweenies. Well, they all like fruit, but they've all got their special favourites. My favourite fruit is apples, because they're round and shiny and they crunch when you bite them. <laughs> I think peaches are best because they're so juicy. Yum, yum. Well, I like oranges. <laughs> But not if they've got lots of pips in. I don't like pips. Dum -dum -dum. I think the best fruit is yoghurt, because oh, it's so tasty. Yum, yum. Uh, yoghurt's not a fruit, Jakey. Huh. Yoghurt's made from milk. But uh, then why does it taste so fruity? It only tastes fruity when it's got fruit in it. Yes, this is right, Jake. That's why you get all different flavours. Oh, well, and mine's got strawberry in, oh. and that's my favourite. Mm -hmm. uh, want some? <gasps> yes, please! <laughs> uh -oh, uh -oh. Now, let me see if I can remember what fruit I've got to get. Milo likes apples. Oh, but they've got to be crunchy. And Bella wants some peaches. Oh, and I must try and get some oranges without too many pips for fizz. Oh, and some big, fat, red strawberries for Jake. Now, the greengrocer's shop I'm looking for is just along here. Oh, it's my friend Frankie's shop, and it has always got lots of lovely fruit of all kinds. Oh, no! It's closed. Oh, what can have happened? Let me see. Oh, look, there's a notice in the window. Sorry, closed for holidays, back in two weeks. Oh, what am I going to do now? There isn't another greengrocer's for miles. Oh, well, let me think now. Oh, I know. I'll go to the market. They have lots of fruit there. This is the fruit market, and fruit comes here from all over the world. They have just about every fruit you can think of, and some you can't. How many fruits can you think of? How many fruits do you know? I'll tell you one to start the fun, and then you have a go. A bright yellow banana from a banana tree. You peel the skin and bite right in. It's just the fruit for me. What about an apple? <laughs> you find it hard to beat. <laughs> they're nice and round, and I have found they're juicy and they're sweet. Oh, how, how many fruits can you think of? How many fruits do you know? I've told you mine, now I think it's time for you to have a go. Peaches are delicious. They're golden like the sun. To bite, a real delight, and I'm gonna eat more than one. <laughs> How many fruits can you think of? How many fruits do you know? <laughs> I've told you mine, now I think it's time for you to have a go. I love a love a big orange that you can cut or peel. I like the smell, I like the taste, I also like the feel. Oh, squishy! How many fruits can you think of? How many fruits do you know? I've told you mine, now I think it's time for you to have a go. Yeah! Strawberries are my favourite. <laughs> Strawberries are for me. They're red and sweet and great to eat. I want some for my tea. Yum, yum! How many fruits can you think of? How many fruits do you know? Hold your mind, now I think it's time for you to have a go. Well, we've heard a lot about fruits, but there are many more. Grapefruit, there's bananas, and gooseberries galore. Blackberries, raspberries and lemons, there's 
mangoes and pawpaws. There's so many fruits all around us, so many fruits that we see. All different shapes, from banana to grapes, just waiting for you and me. There's so many fruits all around us, yeah. so many fruits that we see. <laughs> all different shapes, from banana to grapes, yeah. just waiting for you and me. Just look at all these lovely apples. But don't they look grand? I think I'll get four. One for each of the tweenies. Yep. Oh, don't these peaches look, um, well, um, peachy? <laughs> And just think, a few days ago, they were hanging on a tree, somewhere warm and sunny. And then the farmer picked them and sent them over here for us to enjoy. Oh, these oranges come from somewhere hot too. And they're brought here by big ships and planes, so they're still fresh when we get them. Now, I'll just pick four really juicy ones for the tweenies. It's a pity that Frankie's shop was closed. But I must say, there's a great choice here. I've never seen so many different kinds of fruit in one place. Now, I think I've nearly got everything I wanted, except for Jake's strawberries. But not to worry, oh, they're bound to have masses of them here. It's just a matter of finding them. Now then, they normally have boxes and boxes of strawberries just along here. Let's have a look. All oh, the strawberries have gone! Oh, someone else must have bought them. Guess what? Judy's gone to the fruit market and she's got us all some oranges! Oh, that's good! <laughs> oranges are my favourite! Oh. And did she get anything else? Uh, yes, she did, Bella. She got everybody a tasty peach! Oh, that's great! I love peaches! Oh, and Milo, uh, did she get anything else? Yes! <laughs> best of all, yeah. we've all got a lovely, juicy apple <laughs> each! Oh, what about strawberries? She must have got some strawberries! <laughs> oh, no. No, she couldn't get any. They were all gone. But the strawberries are my favourite. Well, they must be somebody else's favourite, mate. Huh? That's why they'd all gone. Oh, no strawberries. What are we going to do? Oh, don't worry, Jake. Judy will think of something. Oh, great. <laughs> Probably. Uh. And Judy has thought of something. If you're short of strawberries, don't sit around and moan. Get on your bike or take a hike. Go out and pick your own. And here's the very place. This is where people come to pick their own fruit. It's not a shop or a market. It's a farm. But they grow several different things here. And they've got fields full of strawberries. And all you have to do is get a basket and you can pick as many as you like. Oh, it looks like fun. And it's not just grown-ups that come to pick their own fruit. Whole families can come for a day out, and everybody lends a helping hand. When they've got as much as they want, the fruit is weighed and paid for. Oh, it looks like someone can't wait until they get home to taste it. Oh, I must say I'm really looking forward to picking my own strawberries. Oh, but I think I'll have a little rest first. And it'll give me a chance to have a read of this book I've just got for the tweenies. It's called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Once upon a time, there was a princess, and her name was Snow White. She was a very pretty princess. And when Snow White was quite small, her mother died, and her father, the king, married again. The new queen was beautiful. But she was also proud and very vain. She had a magic mirror, and when she looked in it, she said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the loveliest one of all? And the mirror always answered, You are the loveliest, O oh queen. But Snow White was growing prettier and prettier, 
And one day, when the queen looked in the mirror and asked her usual question, the mirror answered, O oh, queen, you are lovely, it is true, but Snow White is lovelier far than you. Then Snow White shall die, said the queen, and she ordered one of her huntsmen to take Snow White into the forest and kill her. But the huntsman could not bear to hurt the lovely young girl, so he took her into the forest and left her there all alone. Poor Snow White wandered through the forest, and at last she came to a little cottage. Everything inside was bright and clean and tidy. The table was laid with seven little loaves on seven little plates and seven little glasses of wine. Around the table were seven little chairs, and along one wall were seven little beds. Snow White was tired and hungry, so she ate some bread from each plate and drank some wine from each glass. Then she lay down on one of the beds and fell asleep. When it was almost dark, the door opened and in came seven dwarfs. They lit seven little candles and at once they knew that things were not exactly the same as when they had left home. They lifted their candles and the light fell on Snow White. <gasps> they said, what a lovely girl. Snow White woke. And when she saw seven dwarfs looking down at her, she was surprised. Oh, but the dwarfs were so friendly that she soon told them all about herself. From then on, Snow White lived with the seven dwarfs. But one day, back at the palace, the queen looked in the mirror and asked her usual question. And the mirror answered, Oh queen, you are lovely, it is true. But Snow White is lovelier far than you. And in the hills, in the forest shade, with seven dwarfs her home she has made. Then Snow White shall die, said the wicked queen. She filled a basket with some beautiful ripe apples and put some poison on the biggest apple. She only put the poison on the rosy red side. She didn't touch the green side. Then the wicked queen disguised herself as a poor old woman and with the basket of apples on her arm, off she went. When she came to the seven dwarfs' cottage, she knocked at the door and called out, Ripe apples for sale! Snow White opened the window. Here is a piece of my sweet, juicy apple just for you. Snow White reached out her hand and took it. She bit into the apple, and then she fell to the floor as if she were dead. When the seven dwarfs came home and found Snow White lying on the floor, they tried to wake her, but they could not. So they made a glass coffin for her and wrote in gold letters on the lid, Snow White, a royal princess. One day, a prince came riding by, and when he saw Snow White, oh, he fell in love with her and asked the dwarfs if he could take the glass coffin back to his father's palace. Although the dwarfs did not want to lose Snow White, they could see that the prince loved her so they agreed. But as they lifted the coffin, one of the dwarfs stumbled and jolted it, and the piece of poisoned apple fell out of Snow White's mouth. Then she opened her eyes and said, Where am I? Oh, imagine how happy they all were. The prince soon asked Snow White to marry him, and she said yes. She then said goodbye to the seven dwarfs and rode off with the prince. Now, the wicked queen was among the many guests who were invited to the wedding. When she got there and saw that the beautiful bride was Snow White, the wicked queen was overcome by such a furious rage that there and then she fell to the floor and died. But Snow White and the prince and the seven dwarfs, they all lived happily ever after. Oh, that was a great story, wasn't it? Now, it's time to pick some strawberries. There! Don't they look good? And they're bound to taste better. Well, because I picked them myself. Well, I bet Jake's going to love these. 
Oh, it's all right, Jake. Huh? Judy's got the strawberries. Oh, great. <laughs> I can't wait to eat them. Oh, me too. I could eat I could eat a hundred of them. Wait, what could you eat a hundred of, Milo? Strawberries. And Judy's got us some. Oh, yeah. good. I could eat a hundred of them too. Oh, oh, yeah. So could I. Huh? I love strawberries. Yum, yes. Hang on a minute. Oh, well, if you all eat a hundred of them, there won't be any left for me. Oh, don't worry, Jake. Uh, Judy will think of something. Oh, uh, good. Uh, probably. probably. Don't worry. Definitely. <laughs> I never knew strawberries were so popular. Well, it's lucky I'm here, really, because I always say, If tweenies want more strawberries, you'll never hear me moan. Here's what I'll do. I'll see it through. I'm off to pick... Christmas is my favourite time of year. The Christmas tree is the first decoration to go in the house. I help um, my mum and dad to decorate the tree. I put on baubles and tinsel. And my favourite decoration to put on is the Ooh. star. My dad puts Oy. me on his shoulders and then I can reach the tippy top of the tree. Before Christmas night, I write for the Christmas letter what I want, and then it else makes the presents. For Father Christmas, we will leave a mint pie and a cup of sherry, but for Rudolph, we leave a carrot and some milk. And then we go and put the stockings up in our bed. When we wake up, the first thing I see is my stocking. Then on my way, Alex up, and then we go into Mummy and Dad's bedroom. We jump on them, and then we go downstairs, and Grandma and Granddad come over, have the biggest, biggest Christmas dinner. I feel like a big Christmas pudding afterwards. I want to wish everybody a very happy, happy Christmas and New Year. But be good. Hello and welcome to the weekend here on CBeebies.